If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here. I have a deck that was requested by uh, Margaret Goff. Well, sort of, sort of. She's running Pox in a format called Pre-Modern. Uh, before I forget, shoutouts to Gary T for signing my map. Uh, Pre-Modern is a format that's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It starts after Old School, and it ends at Modern. So you won't get to play any 8th edition, any Mirrodin, but it also cuts off after, it starts off at 4th edition, so no Black Lotuses, nothing like that. Just to be clear, no revised tools, none of those shenanigans. Uh, now, this is a format that, as you can imagine, will end up having something of a stale meta eventually, because no new cards get added to it unless the ban list changes every now and then, or a meta evolves on itself, etc. But it won't have this perpetual influx because of new cards coming in. Now, that being the case, Margaret is trying a deck called Pox, which is exactly what it sounds like. It runs small pox, and it tries to deny the opponent their resources. And I had a similar idea. Instead of running Pox, mine is just straight up land destruction. So let's jump right on into it. Ooh, now everything has this nice little color to it. Ooh. All right, so we're starting off with Reign of Tears. This is what all of the cards end up being, ultimately. Destroy any one land. They're three mana, all of the land destruction effects, except one, are three mana, and they do this, and that's all we care about. Everything else is just fluff, and in one case, maybe a little pretentiousness. Uh, next, we have Rancid Earth. <laughs> this one is destroy target land with threshold, so if you have seven or more cards in your yard, uh, when it resolves. Uh, instead, destroy that land, and it deals one damage to each creature and each player, so it's a tiny little field wipe, maybe. Next, we have Ice Quake, which is destroy target land, and by the way, if that land happened to be snow-covered, this will deal one damage to that controller. Cool. Not even bothering keeping them over. Alright, so then we have Choking Sands, and this is the worst. And by the way, shout-outs to uh, the printer that I used. Uh, had some sort of roller issue where it created these lines that I mean you can very clearly tell this is not the actual card But it gives a foil impression so it was broken in such a way and instead of remaking them I just decided that looked cool. All right, so this is choking sands destroy target non swamp land Won't work in the mirror won't work against pox won't work too well against mono black aggro if it does anything This is often the first one you side out if however it does destroy a non basic land it deals two damage to that lands controller now, I said that this is pre-modern. Uh, you don't get your old duels, and you aren't new enough that you get the shock lands. So you actually don't have as many non-basics as you might think. You really don't. You can have fetch lands, those exist, but those are only able to get basic lands. <laughs> you can't get shocks. Uh, and as a result, choking, s or, uh, yeah, choking sands won't have as many targets as you might think. Lastly, we do still get Wasteland! Strip mine is banned, so we get Wasteland! <laughs> uh, very simply, if you play Legacy, if you play Vintage, you know what this card does. It, it's essentially a spell that says, skip your land drop this turn, destroy target non-basic land. That's, that's how it feels a lot of the time. Alright, cool! So those are your land destruction spells, that spells. That's your package, <laughs> and so with 20 of them, with a third of the deck dedicated to land destruction, what else do we have? Well, we also want to be able to get those effects early, so we have some ramp. We have Dark Ritual, which is just pay a black mana, you get black, black, black. Uh, yes, it's an alpha card, but as you can see, it's been printed since then, and quite a few times. Uh, Shoutouts to Rebecca Gay, this is my favorite art for the card. It's pretty sweet. And then we have more ramp. We have Lotus Petal, hurrah! This one is baby Black Lotus. This does a third of what Black Lotus does, and it's still restricted in Vintage, so shoutouts to Lotus Petal. You can't see the setup, but this reach is actually harder to do than you might think. So now that we have our land destruction, how are we actually going to interact with the opponent? Yeah, we can sh deny their resources, but how are we actually going to interact? Well, we start off with having something to do against combo decks, or just any sort of, you know, there are a lot of decks that Duress will work against. As the as you go back in time in Magic, you find that typically, typically, they were less creature-centric, uh, and so Duress will have more targets. Uh, even in something like Mono Black Aggro, some of your creatures are actually not creatures, they're 
Like there's the uh, enchantment that makes a 2-2 zombie, for instance. That's that's a thing. That's something you can do. Uh, next we have Innocent Blood. Each player sacks a creature. You don't have creatures. They hopefully do. This is just a one for one for one mana. Easy enough. And I say you don't have creatures. You have creatures. You don't have creatures. You'll see. Uh, now, for any actual I want to win on creatures and creatures alone deck, in Snaring Bridge, we are we are playing that. We are absolutely in that game. Each creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand can attack. You'll very quickly get down to zero cards in hand, and they won't be able to attack. Ta-da! <laughs> this is also pre-exalted, so no exalted shenanigans to get by. As an infect player, I'm contractually obligated to point that out. And next we have Curse Scroll. This is a one-mana artifact with a three-mana activated ability. Tap, name a card. Target opponent chooses a card at random from your hand. If they choose that card, it deals two damage to target creature or player. So when you get down to one card in hand, you can use this to just straight up deal two damage. And this will be your main win condition. Most of the time, this is your win condition. This isn't vintage, no raw doesn't see as much play, and so as a result, you're not likely to see too much hate to this, though it is certainly possible, and we do have backup win conditions, but that's good old curse roll. Now, as for backup win conditions, I'm primarily talking about the slowest win con you've ever seen in your life. Spawning pool. This won't work against everything, it's simply a 1-1. It comes in tapped as black mana or pay one in black, and it becomes a 1-1 with black regenerate. Uh, yeah. This is really slow, but if you keep denying your opponent resources, it gives a painfully slow, but nevertheless inevitable, way to win the game. If they get a creature, you play Innocent Blood. If they have a card in their hand to interact, you duress it away. That sort of thing. Eventually, and by the way, with Ensnaring Bridge, you can still attack. You draw your card, attack with it, and then you can play the card to keep the Ensnaring Bridge from going off, if that matters. Okay, but realistically, this isn't how you're doing it. You're doing it with Curse Roll. And the sideboard has more ways to get rid of to get rid of creatures, so that makes it a little bit more useful. As for a little bit more card draw, well, I say a little bit more, a little bit of card draw, because otherwise we don't have much, we have Varen Moore. And I've considered putting in, I think it's called Polluted Mire, which is the same thing. So it comes in and play tapped, adds black to your mana pool, this one cycles for black, the other one cycles for two generic. One way you can lose the game is you find these and you don't find these. You don't find a way to actually close the game out. So Baron Moor lets you use that mana and that card later in the game for something, anything. Some way to close the game out. Alright. Cool. Oh, and by the way, I should also mention Spawning Pool's primary purpose is to keep you alive. You make a creature that can regenerate itself and it just creates a wall every turn. So that's, that's its primary purpose. It's not primarily a win condition. And then Eight Swamps. And because this is pre-modern, shoutouts to Older Swamps. Love ya. These are, I believe, revised. I'm gonna say. I should know that. I should know that. Now, as for the sideboard, uh, if you need to kill more creatures, a lot more creatures, here's good old Chainer's Edict. It's two mana, sorcery speed, target player sacks a creature. It has a flashback when you get absolutely flooded. That lets you kill more creatures, and you'd be surprised how often that comes up. It actually does. Uh, as for, uh, speaking of killing creatures, Green has elves. Elves are pretty good. Destroy all green creatures. This feels like a six for one sometimes. This is a really good card. Uh, elves is a deck that can come out quickly enough and plays against our land destruction by having creatures that will themselves make lands and they have a way to get forest back into their hand. So Parish is something you really need for that matchup. It's, it's not a good matchup for you. So there you go. Cool. If your meta doesn't have any, feel free to skimp, but that's my that's my take. As for Graveyard Hate, we have Coffin Purge. It's a one mana instant with flashback for one mana. Re uh, remove target card in a graveyard from the game. Target card. Doesn't have to be a creature, it can be anything. Plays against Reanimator, plays against anything that wants a certain card in their yard. Yay! And additionally, I have a one of Planar Void. Only a one of because if it's not in your opening hand, it's not as great. Because it's like Leyline of the Void. Whenever a card is put into a graveyard, remove that card from the game. With the exception of Rancid Earth, you don't have anything that cares about cards in your yard. But once they already have a card there and then you play the Planar Void, it doesn't do anything about that card. So that's why it's only one of. It's great in the opening hand, not as great otherwise. Now, one way that you can lose, <laughs> unfortunately, is, you know, while Force of Will is not a card in this format, it's banned. Uh, you can't play Force of Will 
and that would normally open up the format to a whole host of very quick combo decks. I mean, consider the storm cards that are in the format. Tendrils of Agony. But nevertheless, they don't let you do that because they've banned a lot of those. Combo can still be a thing, but because there's no Force of Will, there's kind of, let, let's say there's an implicit turn four rule. The, the format has to be a little bit slower. Uh, but there are still some decks that can abuse that speed, uh, and there are still plenty of ways to ramp. I just showed you Dark Ritual and Lotus Petal, for instance. And so we have Sphere of Resistance. This is a way to slow those deck de decks down long enough so that we can deny them their resources. Yes, it makes our cards more expensive too, but we are going to be casting one spell a turn. So essentially, per turn, this taxes us just by one. For them, it can tax them by X, where X is the number of spells they would have liked to cast that, excuse me, that turn. Shuts Storm down completely, and there are still Storm cards. I think Brain Freeze is still in the format, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is just something to shut them down. You, you do have to rest. Another thing you can consider between the main or side is the card Unmask. It is, uh, I believe, a 4 mana, 4 or 5 mana a sorcery. It's, it's Black Force of Will. You pitch a black card, and that is, you exile it, and you take a look at their hand, and you get to take a card out of it. Yay! It's a great way to preemptively strip them of their resources. You have to two for one yourself to do that, but in a deck like this, that's usually fine. That's a card you can consider mainboard or sideboard. I would prefer sideboard because I don't want it in every match. But beyond that, uh, Phyrexian Arena can also see some play. I would do no more than one in the main and then some number in the side, perhaps. It helps you to play against control. So Phyrexian Arena is a three mana enchantment, one black black, and on each of your upkeeps you lose a life and draw a card. So you get an extra card every turn at the cost of one life. You can play this against these longer, grindier decks because they're not putting a clock on you and you need to outpace them on resources. It plays a little bit against Ensnaring Bridge, and I like Ensnaring Bridge so much I like it as a four of. This deck doesn't have a lot of draw power otherwise. Uh, so I'm doing Bridge there instead, but you can feel free to do Arena. Uh, turn one arena in some matchups is <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard for the opponent to beat often so there's that that's my uh, deck tech this is mono black land destruction if you have any other suggestions feel more than free to let me know another thing you can try though I don't definitely don't recommend it is you can make a transformational sideboard you can transform into say a mono black aggro or mid-range deck there are still some black cards that can make you a creature deck and if your opponent sides as if you are this and you are instead something completely different, they will often have sideboarded incorrectly against you. So, that's worth something, right? Ta-da! Alright, take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!